את השם, פרשת תזריע. אז יאמרו, פרשת תזריע זה אומרת בין הזמנים, it's close to the vacation, it's ידוע also what the מרשה, המרשה רבי שלמה אידלש, he used to say that he doesn't understand why it is בין הזמנים. He says, from Torah you don't take off. Torah you continue learning. So don't, no בין הזמנים. But the מעשה, a lot of רבנים, it's מקובל בעולם that people go out for vacation, vacation, בין הזמנים, right? Later learning. So we're going to try to, a small message from this week's parasha, parasha Tazria. <coughs> In the parasha Tazria, we're speaking about negaim, all kinds of types of leprosies, right? You can have leprosies on the skin of a person, you can have leprosy on a clothes, bgadim, and you can have leprosy in the walls of the house, right? On the skin itself, right, there is on the skin, and there's also on the karachat and padachat and zakan. So like you have the head, and you have the forehead, and you have the beard, right? The type of the beard and the hair, it's like a different type of tzarat. On the skin, lavan. It's white. The nega, right, the, the thing is white. But when it comes to the beard and the hair, it's yellow, okay? When it comes to the clothes, it's green. It comes to the house, it's green, okay? Yarak rak. Or adam dam, reddish, green reddish. Over here there's a pasuk, the Rabbi Nishchai explains the pasuk. He says, when it comes to the beard, okay? Ve'ish or isha, Kiyeh bo nega, naga, berosh o bezakan. Okay? So the Torah says, Amok, lo amok, se'ar tsaov, lo tsaov, right? Se'ar shachor. Then it says over here that, Ve'im be'enav amad anetek. Somebody starts to show simanim of tsarat, like signs of leprosy, and all of a sudden it stops. Amad. The netek does not become bigger, does not go smaller, amad the netek. So the Torah says, V'se'ar shachor tzamach bo. The hair, which was supposed to be yellow, now grows black hair, which is siman ta'ara, which is sign of purity. Says the Torah, nirpa netek. This is a sign that the netek, the, this type of leprosy got healed. Tahoru. It's tahor v'tiaro a kohen. So the kohen sees it. He says, "Mister, you're clean. You're pure." Okay. The rabbi Nishchai says, "Wasn't it enough to say in the Torah, 'Vim be'enav amad anetek v'sa'ar shachor tzamach bo v'tiaro a kohen? Why do we have to say tahor who? It's pure v'tiaro a kohen, and the kohen can now purify this person. It's good enough to say sa'ar shachor v'tiaro a kohen." Why do we have to say tahor hu? Said Rabbi Nishchai, in, uh, in, it's one of the, in the Alach Shana Shniya, he writes it in the Alachot, in the Shana Shniya, in the Akdama, he writes, the Kohen cannot purify the person unless the person connects himself to a tzinor, to a pipe called tahara. So he says, shoresh a tahara, First he's connected to Tara, and then the Kohen Yichol Eteroto could purify him. So the Torah is telling you, Tahoru, first he's connected to Tara. How he's connected to Tara? Shar sar shachor tzamachbo. The hair becomes black. Right? And then when the Kohen sees that, that he connected himself to a pipe of Tara, v'tiyaro Kohen, then he connects it. So the Rabbi Nishchai wants to say Yesod. What's the Yesod? Certain times you have to be connecting a certain tzinor in order to be have the shefa, the abundance that you're about to get, only if you connect it. So he wants to give over here an example. He wants to give an example. One of the examples he says, we say in Birkat Amazon, Could somebody doesn't have Brit Milah learn Torah? Maybe he could. But there's a story in Alenu Shabeach there's a story over there, a professor that came from Russia, and he wasn't circumcised. He was Jewish, but not circumcised. You know, he came from Russia and is very, very intelligent, very uh, mehandes, he's an engineer, he's, he's chacham in mathematics and everything he wants. And he started to get attracted by the Gemara. 
אבל הוא יושב בשיעור דף יומי, לא מבין כלום. אתה זמן אסטמטי. פלא. הוא אמר, how come? He knows engineering, he knows electricity, he knows anything he want. comes to the Gemara, he doesn't understand nothing. He learns, but he doesn't understand. Amen. So, the rabbi is trying, and then the rabbi is giving daf yumi, he sees the guy is like discouraged. He says, I'm going to ask for you, a rabbi, I'm going to ask a rabbi, I'm going to ask him. So he went to Rav Eliashiv, and Rav Eliashiv told him, oh, he's from Russia. Did he do Brit Milah? So the rabbi didn't know in the beginning, so he went to ask. He said, did you do Brit Milah? He said, no. Rav Eliashiv told him, as long as he doesn't do Brit Milah, he cannot learn Torah. He could learn. He doesn't know. He's not going to understand nothing. He could be Chacham. He could be an engineer. He could be whatever he wants. Torah, you won't be able to understand without Brit Milah. So he came to tell him. In the beginning he said no. And then he says, okay, you know what? If this is what it takes to learn Gemara, he's willing to do Brit Milah. He was not planning to do Brit Milah. He was a certain age. He was 60 or over. The minute he started to do Brit Milah, after he did Brit Milah, all of a sudden he starts to understand. He, stand, he was amazed. So the, the, the professor came, the, the rabbi of Dafimi came to Rav Eliashi. He said, he, what has happened? He says, yeah. There is a connection between Torah and Brit Milah. Okay? So if you don't have Brit Milah, so the Gemara says, אם לא בריתי יומם ולילה, חוקות שמיים וארץ לא שמתי. What's בריתי? So there's two ways the Gemara explains. בריתי זה הברית. The Olam, this world is standing on ברית מילה. The Jewish people doing the, the circumcision, the ברית מילה. On the other hand, בריתי זה ברית התורה. אם לא בריתי יומם ולילה, says רבי שמעון בר יוחאי, למה הקדוש ברוך הוא, why did הקדוש ברוך הוא make it? That in America it's daytime, in Israel it's nighttime. In Israel it's daytime, in America it's nighttime. Why is it? So the Rav Chaim Valoshin explains to should be continuous learning the Torah 24 hours. Because in Chas V'Shalom, in one second, the world stops one second learning Torah. In Lom Briti, Yom Valayla, Chukot, Shamayim Va'aretz, everything goes back to Tovah. So Akash Bukhu made sure that, but the Gemara says, Briti, Yom Valayla, it's Brit Mila. In Briti, Yom Valayla, it's Torah. So you see there's a connection. So Brit Milah is a pipe that brings you into Limud Torah. You have to be connected to a pipe, and this pipe brings abundance. What does Brit Milah bring, right? It brings Torah. So that's why the parasha this week starts. It's interesting that Torah tells us to make Brit Milah even on Shabbat. That normally Shabbat is not allowed to cut. You're taking out blood. But it's so important to Kosh Baruch Hu not to waste one second of Torah. So even on Shabbat, you have to circumcise the baby. So you can start understanding Torah already from the eighth day, even if it's for Shabbat, because Shabbat, he has to learn Torah also. So you, 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 do, you do Brit Milah on Shabbat. So the Rabbi Nishchai brings down, there is a law called in Hebrew, Chok Akelim Ashluvim. What does it mean? You have, a, you have a bucket with water. You have a bucket with water. You put it, let's say, over here. If you put the bucket over here, right? You take a pipe, you put it in the bucket, and you put the pipe down, but then you bring the pipe back up a little bit. If you start pouring water in the pipe, what's going to be? The water is going to go down, but the water is going to go up, right? Why? According to the laws of gravity, the water should stay in the middle because there's gravity, so it should stay here. Why does it go up, right? Because, right, this is the chok, this is chok akilim ashluvim. That's why when you see under sinks, how do they always, there is a trap, what they call, right? Always there is the, 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 the way that they, they build the pipe under, right? This is chok. This is, this, we don't understand this because according to the laws of gravity, it should not be this way. But it's a chok. <coughs> chok bateva. This is how. So Rabbi Nishchai wants to use this to tell us, no, you know why? Because water over here is the source. Even if you go down, you're going to go back to your source. Even going down. So which one, sometimes in Limud, there's aliyot ve'eridot, ups and downs. Even if you go, go, go down, as long as you're connected to Torah, you're going to go back up, ah. right? So to tell you the same thing, there's Ben Azmanim, right? We're connected, we're learning and everything. Ben Azmanim, it's like a Zman of Yerida. You, it's, you don't learn as much. You don't learn as much. You learn, but not as much, right? But you should know you're going to go back up. Coming back to Azman, you're going to come back fresh. You're going to start learning. Why? Zechok HaKelim As long as you're connected up, right? Even though you go down, you're going to go back 
uh, up, right? So uh, uh, Am Israel always has to have connection. You have to have connection. So you know that this week, right? There was a pigua in Bnei Brak. There was like an attack, a terrorist attack in Bnei Brak, right? I was speaking to my rabbi yesterday in Bnei Brak. I told him, look, the whole time when Rav Chaim Kanevsky was alive, there was nothing. Not only that, but Milchemet Amifratz, when they, they had the, the uh, right, when they had the scuds yeah. coming in Israel, Rav, Rav Kanevsky said, no scud is going to come into Bnei Brak. Right? So, Kapshutu, you understand, because there's so much Torah in Bnei Brak. Bnei Brak is a Olam Torah, it's a, so many yeshivot, so many Talmud Torah, so many things, right? And Rav Chaim passed away. So, what's Pshat? Pshat is, that's a dik. It's a dik is there. Right? So I wanted, uh, in Bnei Brak never. There was never no missiles, no attacks, no nothing. Only Rav Chaim passed away, look what, and they told me that this week people didn't send kids to schools, didn't to yeshiva, yeah, a lot of kolelim were closed. What is it? After the, after Maisa, after the, the terrorist attack, right? So you see that Rav Chaim, and Rav Chaim says, I found in uh, his uh, brother-in-law of uh, Zilberstein, he writes, he wrote the book many years ago, but it's interesting, this week's parasha. Rav Chaim says, how do you get saved from Puranut? Right? And he brings something beautiful. He brings something beautiful. What? There's the Gemara in Sanhedrin. The Gemara says that Echad uh, Meir, there's a Pasuk, the Gemara brings Echad Meir with Shnei Mishpacha. What is Echad Meir with Shnei Mishpacha? The Gemara says, Rish Lakish, Machloket Rish Lakish, and Rabbi Yochanan. Echad Meir, Shnei Mishpacha. Says, says uh, uh, Rish Lakish, you know what's going to happen when Mashiach comes? A lot of people which are not so good, which are not Shomer Torah Mitzvot, they're going to have to leave the world. So you're going to have in families, Be'ir, Olay Kol A'ir Te'alem Yishereke Echad. A whole city is going to go away, in time Mashiach, one tzaddik is going to stay in the world. A whole family disappears, Shnai Mishpacha. From a whole family, two people stay in Mishpacha. Rabbi Yochanan Shomer, I'd say, here, what, 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 Omer? How you can say that? It's very harsh what you're saying. You cannot say such things. On Am Israel, what? You don't, the whole city is going to disappear. One person is going to stay in the whole city because he was a leak. You cannot say such thing. So Rabbi, no, Rabbi Yochanan, when Rabbi Rishtakish used to know, no, Rabbi Mabshat, he says, no, Echad Meir, if there's one tzaddik in the city, Matzil et Kol Ha'ir is going to save the whole city. If there's nine in the two tzaddik in the Matzil et Kol Ha'ir. And they were arguing. Comes the Chazonish, he says, Rish Lakish and Rabbi Yochanan, Leshitatam. According to their opinion, they learned this Pasuk, Echad Mir, Mishnah, Mishpara, and their opinion. What's their opinion? He says there's a machloket in Zvachim, in Masechet Zvachim, there's a discussion between Rish Lakish and Yochanan. Somebody who is Maktir Bachutz, he brought a sacrifice outside the Bet HaMikdash. It's Avera, it's Asu. It's not allowed, right? What, how, much could you, how much you sacrifice in order to be over Avera? 30 grams. 30 grams is the minimum. If you take 30 grams basar, 30 grams basar, and you sacrifice it mechutz lebet hamikdash outside the temple, it's Isu already, right? So Rish Lakish and Rabbi Yochanan are arguing, yesh lecha chati chat basar, you have a piece of meat, and the piece of meat has only 20 grams. But there is a bone, etzem, there is a bone. And together, if you weigh the bone and the meat, it's 30 grams. Chayav or chayav? If you sacrifice outside. So, uh, Rish, uh, Rabbi Yochanan Omer, chayav. Why? Ha'etzem mashlim le 30 gram. The etzem is mashlim kazait. And Rish Lakish Omer, patu. Rish Lakish says, no. The meat by itself and the bone by itself. Says the chazonish, Omer chazonish, le shitatam, to their opinion, since the bone, which is not edible, but it's connected to the meat, mashlim et abasar, it completes the meat. Same thing, when you connect it, tzaddik, right? Mechaper al kol adoch. Mechaper al kol ha-mishpacha. He, 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 he protects the whole family, he protects the whole city. And Rish Lakish Omer, there's no connection between the bone and the meat, which means there's no connection between tzaddik and rasha. So if Mashiach comes, a lot of people are going to go away, only the tzaddikim are going to stay. Leshitatam. Says Rav Chaim Kanevsky, Mizel Omer Rav Kanevsky, if you mechobar to a tzaddik, right? You, 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 you want, you, you, you be protected, right? So that's why. Dvarim b'shem omram, as long as he was alive, no terrorist entered Bnei Brak, right? Because, and the whole Bnei Brak, 
You know, he's speaking about uh, a whole city of Torah that maintains the whole world by, by its Torah, right? There's a lot of places of Torah in Lakewood. There's a lot of places. But Bnei Brak, psh, Makom Torah eh, Olami, right? Worldwide. But there was one Sadiq over there. I am Chaper al Kolayim, right? So he wrote the Dvarim many years ago. But to tell you, this is... So the, the, the Ben Azmanim, he has to be connected to Torah. Ki lekach Torah tati lachem, Torah ti al ta'azor. You learn, we shtag, we learn, but we go ben asmanim, you know. It's a mitzvah to help for Pesach, to clean, there's a mitzvah, it's also a mitzvah, right? It says the Rosh, Rabbeinu Asher, he used to do matzot, and he used to take the ze'ah, v'menagev et ha-metzach, he used to clean his ma'at, why? Arizal Omer, whatever you sweat for doing matzot, whatever you sweat for Shabbat, cleaning Shabbat, whatever you sweat for doing a mitzvah, when you take the sweat, and you wipe your forehead, mechaper lo al kol avonotav, you mechaper kol avonotav, right? So we have, shame. We, have, we, have to, we have to sweat a little bit for Pesach, but Torah Tiyal From time to time, we have to why to be still connected, right? La Torah Kedusha. Right? So, so basically, Yad Hashem, we should all know that you're never supposed to disconnect. So, Abraham Chaim HaKadosh Rabbi Chaim Ben Atar, right? He says in Parashat Temor, there's a Pasuk, Ve'ichiti k'tziru et k'tzirchem. He says, Chaz Shalom, in the Torah, there's certain averot, there's certain sins, which is chayav karet. Right? What's karet? He says, what's karet? He explains that each neshama, mechuberet HaKadosh Baruch Hu, she's connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu with two strings which come from the nostrils. It's, you cannot see it. And those strings are connected by Shamaim to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. What's karet, Chaz Shalom? When you make an averat, the Kosh Baruch Hu chel chamesh ba-Pesach, you eat chamesh ba-Pesach, karet. You, uh, uh, Kippur, you eat on Kippur, karet, okay? So what happens then? He says, the Kosh Baruch Hu, he cuts, he chotech et ha-chutim ha-elei, he cuts those strings, then he has a connection with the Kosh Baruch Hu. The only thing that's the worst, the worst punishment to Omer, to disconnect from the Kosh Baruch Hu. So the Kosh Baruch Hu says, you know, I told you not to do it. You did it. So no connection between us. HaKosh Baruch Hu chotech et ha-chutim ha-elei. אבל הוא אומר, כי תקצרו את קיצרכם, even if הקדוש ברוך הוא קוצר, even if הקדוש ברוך הוא קץ, הוא אומר, נשאר הרושם. There is left, like, like the, the, over there, there's signs left, what does it mean? When you cut a string, you see this, you still see the two, connect, the two parts, you see they were connected, they're just cut. He says, אל תתייאש, don't give, give up, just reconnect, reconnect yourself to Hashem. There's no yeah. such thing as... Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you have to type. <laughs> so to tell you this is the thing. The thing is, you have to be always connected. That's, that's connection, right? You never disconnect from things. You always stay connected. And if you stay connected to Torah, if you stay connected to Sadiqim, all these things, you're sure to be always on the right. Shiluva Kilim. Shiluva Kilim means you're always going to go up. Even if you have down, you're going to go always up. So, Hashem, so Benazmanim, let's use it for... Mm-hmm. Mitzvot for Pesach, kashering, but also also use it for Limud Torah. You have Chol Moed, you have all those things. So that Hashem, we should try to mitchazek. That Hashem, b'shut zeh, Amen. 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 Amen.